So yeah, Keati Lewis, it's a demo of photos. I'm sitting here with uh, Riley Breckenridge, the uh, drummer for my favorite band, Thrice. How are you doing so far today? I'm good, really good. We're at um, Starland Ballroom in Sayreville. Today is uh, October 14th, getting ready to play a show tonight. And uh, sat down with them for a few minutes, get a couple minutes, ask some questions. I appreciate it. Yeah. And you're uh, with the audio perf, so ask some questions for you guys. Cool. I know you're a couple weeks into your tour right now. How's everything been going so far? It's been really good. Um, crowds have been great. Uh, the bands we're out with are awesome. I think they're all very complementary to each other, like musically. Right. Um, there's kind of like a common thread that runs through all four bands, but they're all kind of unique in their own way. Um, and everybody out on the tour is super cool. Um, everybody gets along really well. There's no like egos or attitudes or anything. It's just like a big touring family. So it's, it's you're on tour right now with uh, Moving Mountains, O Brother, and uh, La Dispute. Yeah. What made you choose those bands to tour with? Um, the O Brother guys we've been friends with since we did a tour with them and uh, Manchester Orchestra like last April. Um, and have kept in touch since, that, since then. And um, that tour actually got cut short because uh, Dustin's dad was ill. Um, so when we left that tour, we were like, man, we got to go out with our brother again. So they were an easy choice. Moving Mountains, uh, I've been aware of for a few years um, and like what they do. And uh, they seem like really good guys and, and that they get it and they work hard and stuff. So they were an easy choice. And a lot of dispute. Um, we were actually supposed to go out with Kai Lessa. Okay. And uh, their guitar player is having some family issues, like her mom's sick or so, something along those lines, um, which is something that we can all relate with yeah. just through the personal stuff we've gone through over the last year and a half. Um, so they had to pull off the tour so she could be home. And uh, luckily, uh, Lot of Dispute <coughs> was available. And uh, I'd known of them for a little while and liked the energy and yeah. the passion and the music. and. Um, we're just lucky that it worked out. I was going to ask you about that later on, but since you brought it up, I know that um, as a fan of music, you know, a lot of times when people are going through things, they'll find a song or a lyric or an album to latch onto that. Mm -hmm. How did writing the new record, you know, because it's, it's not just your family, I know that Tepe had some stuff going on and all around. As a band, you guys have been going through a lot. Yeah. So how did writing, you know, major minor help you work through that? Did it? It was like therapy, kind of. Um, it was kind of hard to focus while we were writing the record, just because my dad, Ed's dad, was uh, really, really sick. Um, and it actually ended up putting kind of a halftime break in the writing. Like we wrote for like three months, and then my dad got super ill and then passed away. And then we jumped back into it um, in February of this year. Um, so it was kind of hard to focus on writing, but at the same time, being in the studio with the guys and having music as an outlet um, gave me a little bit of time to like not dwell on everything that was going on. Um, so it was nice in that regard and uh, my dad was always like a really big supporter of the band and uh, I feel like uh, getting back to work quickly after he passed was something that he would have been into I guess. Yeah. So it felt good to get back to work to record the record and then now it feels good to be out and playing these songs and touring. How, is the, uh, how are the new songs reacting? How are the fans reacting when you guys are playing them? Pretty good for, for most of them. There are a few that um, the reaction's kind of mixed, like a uh, song Blur, which is like pretty high energy. We thought like people, would love people were going to go yeah. nuts and there's kind of hasn't been that sort of response yet, so we're kind of pulling it in and out of the set um, every once in a while to see Maybe it's just the crowd that day, or maybe it's the song. Um, but that's what, like the first two weeks of tour, first three weeks of tour is always kind of like mixing and matching the set list, uh, finding stuff that flows well, seeing what's going over well. Um, but then there are other songs like uh, Treading Paper and oh, that's Words in the Water, yeah. um, Yellow Belly, Anthology, that are going over really, really well. And it's, it's just awesome, you know, the record came out less than a month ago to have people singing along and being like fully engaged and in the moment um, this early in the album's life is, is awesome. It's uh, it's one of those, it hasn't left my CD player in three weeks, you know, like I actually pre-ordered it, you know, which is something, you know, like I know, I know you're a fan of music, you know, and as a fan of music it's hard sometimes to find something you can put on 
mm -hmm. let the whole thing ride out. But yeah. it, it flows wonderfully, and awesome. there's nothing, there's no skipping around, there's no, you know, and I just let it play, and it gets done, it plays again, and it's just in my car, and I, and I let it play all Thank the time. You very much. So, you know, and I know a lot of people, you guys have changed a lot, mm -hmm. you know. Um, me personally, I feel like we're all around the same age, so when, you know, when those first albums came out, when Artists and Ambulance came out, I was about the same age, so I loved it. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting older, and the band's getting older, and I appreciate that you're not trying to make that album over and over. Because there's some, some bands that, uh, 20 years down the road, are still singing about, like, first dates and still talking like they're 20 years old, and you guys are, you know, yeah. kids and wives and families, things change. Yeah. So it's something that I appreciate personally, you know, that you guys did grow, and I've, you know, the fans have grown with you. Yeah. We're, that's something we're really grateful for, and what you just said is like the best compliment that we can get pretty I, much. Yeah, I'm a, I mean, I'm a huge fan, like, and, and uh, pretty much everybody knows that knows, and like, <laughs> when I was shooting this and coming to do this, people were like psyched for me, because I know that, you know, how much I love you guys, and, uh, cool. and I know your fans are pretty, like, loyal, you yeah. know, which I appreciate, and it's like, you guys put out good music, you know, the bottom line, they might not sound the same every time, Yeah. but uh, it's always good. We've always been in this just to have fun and kind of experiment and see what we can do, and I've never felt um, like we were tied to any particular genre or that, um, that we really had to do anything other than what felt right to us and what was coming from an honest place. So um, we've just been doing that and haven't been like following trends or trying to settle into like our signature sound or something. We just do what we want to do and we're just thankful that our fans are supportive and open-minded and excited about maybe not knowing exactly what they're going to get from record to record. Yeah. How, is, uh, how has touring changed for you over the years? You know, the party is a little bit different now, you guys are a little bit older, mm -hmm. half the band has kids and families, how, how are you guys touring differently than you did 10-15 years ago? Um, we, we definitely tour less. Um, Dustin and Tepe both have kids and, and families uh, that they need to devote time to. Um, so we tour, we used to tour like nine or ten months out of the year, and now it's like five or six. Um, we've never been like a crazy partying band or mischievous group of guys. Um, so the bus has always been like a really mellow place and a, a place to relax. Um, and not really like out late or missing bus calls or doing anything crazy. Um, it's gotten easier just because you get used to sharing space with like right. eight or nine other dudes in a bus. Um, just getting used to the daily routine um, was something that was kind of shocking at first when you, when you first start touring, but you get used to that and uh, you know, in certain cities you have you know, restaurants that you like to hit right. or you got friends there. Um, so it's always a good time. I know it's hard for the guys to be away from their families and yeah. especially away from their kids, but um, we've been lucky enough to you know, have an opportunity to do this for a living. So getting after it every once in a while and, and hitting the road is probably a good thing to do. I was going to bring that up too, that, you know, notoriously the reputation for the band is you guys are really nice, you know, you don't hear stories about craziness, like, mm -hmm. you know, and, and maybe it's a little bit easier now, but even when, you know, when they first started out, I mean, it was super young, how did you avoid all that? How did you avoid the trappings of, you know, the free beer and, and the parties and everything else that I'm sure was available to you? Yeah, every once in a while, we'd go out and, you know, take advantage of the free beer or the after party or whatever, <clears throat> but it was never, it never got, like, out of control. So, I, don't know, I think we're all fans of, of moderation yeah. and uh, I think we've seen enough of our peers make bad decisions um, to know that that's not a road that we want to go down. Right. And I don't think any of us are really wired like that anyway. Um, but yeah, I just, it seems like some bands, they think that once they you know, get signed or they have some amount of success or they're on a tour bus or they can afford hotel rooms every night, it like affords them some kind of license to just be an idiot. And it's not every band, it's, I've seen it with a few bands and it's like, you don't have to live up to like this weird rock star ethos that you party and you fuck stuff up and break things and trash hotel rooms and mess around. Um, I think eventually those type of bands, 
it comes back around and bites me in the ass, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's bands that were supposed to tour this past summer, I was supposed to shoot that had to drop off the tour because of, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And it's, you know, kind of like the fans look at them a little bit differently, you yeah. know, and, and it's, it sucks not to be able to depend on that. Like, oh, I'm definitely going to go see so-and-so in two weeks because they might not be there. They might yeah. come out and play three songs and be like, if you guys are out. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, so. I'm, I'm just so grateful to be able to do this. I don't want to do anything to screw it up, yeah. you know? That's so I'm a good not going to take, take any chances or do anything stupid. In 2011, you know, uh, Twitter and Tumblr and all these internet mediums, and like I said to you earlier, like, you know, I follow the band of a fan, so I know that you're primarily the face of a lot of that. It seems mm -hmm. like you're the one doing, you know, the Tumblr updates and doing, like, the, the different things. Is that something that was decided or just kind of happened? No, it just kind of happened. Um, yeah, the other guys aren't really all that into social media, I guess. And it, part of it, I feel like if you use it correctly, it can be very useful. And in a lot of ways, it's kind of fascinating, like just the reach that it has. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm totally down to to do that. And I have read stuff where it's like, oh yeah, why doesn't somebody else do it? If somebody else wanted to do it, they could do it. But they're usually just like, you can take care of it, you do it. It's yeah. it's cool that even you do it because it's it makes it makes you you know the fans feel like they're connected some way and you know and it's a little bit of extra like you know this is what I listened to today and this is kind of what we did and, yeah. and it's interesting to read because a lot of times you come to the show and and that's all you see and you don't see yeah. the rest of it you know I, I mean I put it out there because. It would be cool if some of my favorite bands yeah. did that. Like if I knew what Just I ask, you know, about some of the new music that's coming out now that that you like. Um the new Oh uh, Brother record, which comes out uh, November fifteenth, is awesome. And I'm not just saying that because they're on this tour. Yeah. It's really, really, really good. Um, and it kind of hits me in all the the musical areas that I like to be in. It's like dynamic mm -hmm. and it's atmospheric and it's really heavy and pretty and nasty all at the same time. Um, I think what else? Earlier in the year, I uh, like the, the Young Widows record that mm -hmm. came out. Um, there's a one-man instrumental band from Columbus. It's not even really a band. It's just a guy making Dude. songs uh, called Cloud Kicker. Okay. That's instrumental and incredible. Um, it's a record by a band called Other Lives that's kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. It's almost Radiohead without electronics and Bon Iver influence, mm -hmm. kind of. New Bon Iver is great. Yeah. Um, I feel like 2011 has been a crazy year for music. Like when I think about putting together like an end of the year list, I don't know how I'm gonna whittle it down to ten bands. There's just a lot of, a lot of good music. There's a couple. There's a band in particular that pops in my head along those lines. Um, the Civil Wars mm. that I like to listen to. Like I love them. You know? Yeah, I haven't heard them, but I know Dustin. Yeah, loves them. they're uh, they're actually playing in New York soon. Oh, I'm gonna cool. check that out. But they, yeah, I mean along the lines of Bonnie Bear and that kind of like pretty mellow, but you know, hits you in the stomach type of music, yeah. like, they're fantastic. It's just yeah. a guy and a girl, you know, awesome. doing vocals and guitar, it's, been, it's amazing. Nice. So, uh, if you weren't doing this, if you weren't playing in Thrice and touring the world, like, what do you think you'd be doing with a day job? I have no idea, because, I mean, before this band started, if you would have said, oh, what do you think you'll be doing in a few years, I would never have thought that I was going to be in a band, and I feel like life has weird ways of pushing you and pulling you in certain directions and uh, kind of putting opportunities in front of you. And, um, I don't know. I mean, I got an English degree, which is totally useless. Um, but I don't know, maybe I'd get a call from somebody to do one thing, which would lead, lead me to another thing, which would lead me to another thing. It's hard to tell. Um, I really enjoy writing, but that's another uh, another talent or profession that uh, people are becoming less eager to pay for. Yeah. Um, I'd love to write, um, and I love baseball, so to, to be involved in baseball somehow would be amazing, but um, yeah, I don't know. 
It's weird. A lot of my friends that, that got degrees in college are all doing jobs that have nothing to do with that degree yeah. just because they got some opportunity out of the blue through a friend or a co-worker or something. So it's cool. Though. Life's unpredictable and that's what makes it kind of exciting. Yeah, it'd be amazing what I was doing a year ago. Yeah. People was, yeah, I used to, uh, used to be a corrections officer. And oh, wow. I would take a picture for like eight years and I quit one day and I'm doing this and people when they find out they're like, what? I'm like, yeah. It wasn't for me, so it's yeah. you know it's crazy. Like and yeah. you said you don't know, you know, five years ago if I thought I'd be sitting down talking to you, I'd be like, you know, yeah. trip me out. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I put it out on Twitter and Tumblr to see if anybody had anything to me ask. So I had a couple like three questions from fans. Um, the first one was somebody wanted to know what the line the wolf was about. Ooh, um, I don't think I can answer that. Okay, that's that's more for Dustin. Yeah. Okay. lyrics are, are his his deal. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Somebody else asked me um, if the majority of major and minor was recorded live. Pretty much. Um, the way we had it set up was uh, Dustin, Ed, or Ed Tepe and I were in the live room. Um, Dustin was like in an isolation booth and he would play like scratch guitar um, along to the rest of the band playing and lay down a vocal track. And that way if screwed up a drum part and needed to do the song over. He didn't have to sit there and like blow out his voice, but um, it did feel very much live. I mean, it was Ed and Teps and I in the same room, and there was definitely an energy in that room, and um, being able to hear the vocals sung, you know, played back every time made it feel like it was live. So we kept a lot of those initial takes. I mean, there was not very much going back in and fixing anything, whether it was guitar, bass, drums, anything. And uh, last question, so we want to know what the news was on the UK or European tour. I don't know at this point. Um, we're trying to figure some stuff out. I know that there's going to be probably a, a US headliner in the spring, but outside of that, I don't, I don't have any idea what's going on. Okay. Um, this is actually the last question, sorry, that's a false alarm. I um, just wanted to ask you about Invisible Children, mm -hmm. for the people who don't know, I know you guys have been involved with them for a long time, mm -hmm. and right now you're still heavily involved. Yeah. You just want to explain just for a quick second what that is, the people watching this who don't know what that is. Um, there's, a, there's a thing going on in Uganda where um, children are being abducted and forced into militias, um, and they don't really have a say in the matter. They're just whisked away and they're taught to be soldiers. And uh, what Invisible Children is trying to do is stop Joseph Coney, who's like the leader of the LRA, um, and try to bring those soldiers home um, through a number of things. They're doing stuff with music and doing uh, like marches and sit-ins and stuff like that. Um, and then on tour, what we have um, is two reps out uh, with merchandise, with literature, um, so that people can engage in conversation with them and ask questions that they want answered. Um, and then it's, it's, it's a fan's choice to go do it. Right. Before, <clears throat> when we worked with them, and when we've worked with other charities, it would be like a percentage of this CD's cost gets donated to a charity. And it's, it's good because it gets people involved, but it's a very passive way right. of getting involved. And by having Invisible Children out on tour with us, um, people can go ask questions and really talk to these people and understand what's going on um, and find out how to get involved beyond just saying, I bought this record and now like 10 cents goes to yeah. this charity. So we're happy to have them out. And I guess Obama today just uh, sent like 100 troops to. Uganda to try to get some stuff done, so things, are, good. things are moving yeah. on. A lot of kids, uh, myself included, sometimes it's it's you kind of get wrapped up in your own little world, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I appreciate that as a band because band is it's very insular. It's very you know so for you guys to reach out, you know. It's, and you've been doing it since you've been a band, yeah, you know, since day one. I think we just feel really fortunate to be able to do this, and um, hopefully by us getting involved, people see that you don't have to be like. A billionaire right. to kind of jumpstart change. And we're not like super wealthy people, but 
we're fortunate we're in a fortunate situation and to be able to use that good fortune to help people that need it, um, it I think it's the right thing to do and uh, hopefully people see that if they don't have a ton of money uh, it's okay you can donate your time or your skills um, there are a lot of people that need help so whether it's invisible children or the homeless shelter in your neighborhood or or anything really all right, guys, just sitting here with uh, Riley, getting ready to play a show tonight. Um, thank you very much. Like yeah, I said, thank I really you. appreciate hanging out for a few minutes. So, if you to those Devil Photos, you can check out these pictures I'll be taking tonight at uh, devilphotos.com or audioperv.com.